Here's an interesting problem in the central limit theorem problem set in web work. We've, we know some things about a population of students. Their average score is 61 and the standard deviation for the population is 10. We want to worry. Now notice here, usually we know the size of the sample that we're taking. But in this case, we're saying what size of sample would we need to take so that we're 94% sure that the score, <clears throat> that, that samples of that size would end up with a, a score between 58.5 and 63.5. Now, where did I get these numbers from? Uh, in the problem it says that we want to have the average would be within 2.5 of the mean. So 2.5 minus from 61 is 58.5. 2.5 added to 61 is the 63.5. Okay, so we want to have in this situation, we don't know what the n is. But if we did know what the n was, then the distribution of all of these sample means would have a mean of 61, and it would have a standard deviation of 10 divided by the square root of whatever that n was. So if we want 95% to be between these two numbers, it means that we would need to have 1 minus, 94%, I'm sorry, 1 minus uh, the 94, the 0.94, divided by 2, because half of that leftover stuff will be down in the bottom tail and the other half will be in the upper tail. So we know what the probability is, what the probability needs to be below this particular amount. Now, it we're going to need to learn a new thing to, uh, to be able to get R to help us here. Let me bring my version of R over here and show you what I'm looking at. I'm going to build a function and this part right here is just the command that says R. I want to build a function. It's going to be called the function F. And then in squiggly brackets you explain what the function is. So my function I want it to be that 1 minus the 94 divided by 2, that's this area over here, minus the probability that I get if I'm looking at a, the area below 58.5 in a mean of 61 and a standard deviation of 10 divided by the square root of x. So when I put different x's in here, it compares how much this is, what we want the area to the left to be, to what this is right here. If it turns out that those two are equal to each other, that will be a zero. Now, let's just look at this, uh, this function for a minute. I've done some calculations here. I'll show you what those are in a minute. But if I looked at f of, of, of 10, for example, then it means that the area, the probability to the left of sample sizes of 10, of size 10, are bigger than this particular area. If I look at f of, say, 100, then that ends up being a positive amount, and so therefore this area is bigger than this area. So the n, the number of the, the sample size that I'm looking for here needs to be somewhere between 10 and 100. All right, now R has a nifty, oops, I'm sorry, I've goofed up that picture. R has a very nifty uh, feature called Uniroot, which takes a function as an input, some function that we're wanting to be equal to zero, and we want to find where that's equal to zero between 10 and 100. Uniroot tells us a whole bunch of other things, but but here it's telling us what the root is. The, the root between 10 and that is 56.59. So we've got to, to have n be at least 56.59. That means that 
uh, n has to be a counting number, so it's going to have to round up to uh, to 57. And there I am checking that result, and and there it is. Okay, two powerful things that we had to learn here. We had to learn about building a function because we needed to to give a function to Uniroot, and Uniroot just searches, just goes through all of the choices for the x between 10 and 100 until it finds uh, uh, the most reasonable choice and tells you what that is. Okay, hope that helps.